touchdown. Touchdown confirmed at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 12.55 a.m. Eastern Time, 10.55 a.m. in Kazakhstan on a Saturday morning. After 185 days in space and a mission spanning 2,960 orbits of the Earth and 78.4 million miles, Kate Rubens, Sergei Rizhikov, and Sergei Kudsvertskov are back on terra firma. At this point, uh, the Russian Mi-8 helicopters with the search and recovery forces uh, in tow will begin uh, to descend one by one, first uh, to erect an inflatable medical tent nearby the capsule, and then begin the process of extracting the crew. A view of the landing site, uh, about 91 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan. Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, circling uh, the landing zone where the Soyuz MS-17 touched down about three minutes or so ago at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 12.55 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday as uh, the Soyuz MS-17 is back on Earth with Kate Rubens, Sergei Rizhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov. Confirmation now being received from the search and recovery forces uh, that the Soyuz MS-17 landed upright. So the uh, crew will be extracted from the top hatch on the Soyuz once uh, a ladder is uh, erected alongside the spacecraft. Again, you can see uh, three of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters on the ground to begin the process of erecting uh, this inflatable medical tent to which the crew members will be brought inside following uh, their extraction from the vehicle and a few minutes to sit in chairs to get their land legs back a bit once uh, they are pulled out of the spacecraft.
This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 landed at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 12.55 a.m. Eastern Time, about 91 miles uh, to the southeast of Jez Kazgan, following a normal, uneventful entry. All of the uh, entry uh, sequence of events went by the book as planned. The uh, three crew members uh, in uh, the descent module of the Soyuz following uh, the undocking earlier this evening from the International Space Station. They are back on Earth uh, awaiting their extraction. Complements of the Search and Recovery Forces uh, whose Russian Mi-8 helicopters are now landing one by one to uh, move their way toward the spacecraft and begin the process of getting the crew out, putting them in chairs near the capsule itself so that they can have an opportunity to uh, get their land legs back a bit before they're carried in their chairs inside uh, the inflatable medical tent to get out of their Soka launch and entry suits and into more comfortable clothing for medical testing. The three crew members then will be flown by helicopters some two hours and 15 minutes uh, to the staging city in Karaganda, Kazakhstan, where uh, the crew members will split up. Rubens boarding a uh, NASA plane to fly back to Houston with uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov boarding a Gagarin cosmonaut training aircraft to fly back to their training base and their homes in Star City, Russia, just outside of Moscow. With us uh, on a satellite uh, phone from the landing site is NASA Public Affairs Officer Courtney Beasley. Courtney, uh, you are down on the ground very quickly as well. Just within minutes of touchdown, uh, we, do, we are looking at helicopters, not yet uh, seeing TV of the spacecraft at the landing site, so fill us in on what you're seeing. Rob, it's great to hear from you. As you said, I'm here at the landing site. There are still some helicopters touching down right now. Um, it was an upright landing, and it looks like the crew has been waving to the personnel outside of the capsule. Um, our helicopter, the skies are as clear as they can get. We actually got a visual of the capsule 10 minutes before touchdown, and we were able to follow it from that planet mark all the way down to the ground. We were one of the first helicopters out, and I'm on the ground right now. They're putting the stand up getting ready to extract the crew. What, uh, what was the flight like uh, from uh, your staging point in Jezkazgan to the landing site? At what point did you uh, pick up the Soyuz, and uh, how was uh, the touchdown? Could you see the soft landing engines from your perspective? Yeah, Rob, the skies are clear. The crew could not have asked for a more beautiful dish to touch down here and breathe this fresh air here back on Earth for the first time in 185 days. Again, about 57 degrees here, clear skies. We got a visual of the capsule about 10 minutes before it touched down. We were able to follow the capsule all the way down to the ground. The capsule did have an upright landing. They have the stand around the capsule right now. They've opened it up, and they're ready to extract the crew. We expect that Commander Sergei Rizhikov will be first out. And uh, we should be uh, receiving a video from uh, the uh, landing site from the spacecraft here momentarily, and we now have video, Courtney, as uh, we watch uh, the search and recovery forces uh, surrounding uh, the spacecraft. Give us uh, a play-by-play -play of what you're seeing. Yeah, Rob, there are two personnel on top of the stand right now. They are uh, waiting to open the capsule up. Um, they're actually starting to put up this uh, medical tent where the crew will go for medical evaluation um, after they are extracted and get an opportunity to sit in those chairs for a few minutes. Um, so right now we're just standing by for them to open it up and start extracting the crew. Hang in there with us, uh, Courtney. Uh, we, uh, we lost uh, the video feed. We only had it for a moment. Uh, so 
keep no, uh, providing us uh, with what you're seeing uh, as uh, recovery developments unfold uh, at the spacecraft. No problem, Rob. They're rising off the top right now. Again, we should just be a couple seconds away from opening up. And uh, once uh, the three crew members uh, are out of the spacecraft, uh, I assume that they've uh, put chairs up uh, near uh, the uh, spacecraft itself. What uh, will be the scenario uh, and the sequence of events after that? Yeah, Rob, they're actually setting those chairs up as we speak. Two of them are already on the ground set up um, just a couple feet away from the capsule itself. These crew members will be carried out by one. At that point, they'll get to sit down, kind of catch their breath from that ride down. They'll get to make their first call back to Earth, whether it's to family or friends, get to tell them about their trip home back to Earth. And they'll sit there for a few minutes, get a chance to um, recuperate. And from there, they'll head into the medical tents for further medical evaluation. Um, in those chairs, they'll get their first medical evaluation as well. The um choreography of uh, how the search and recovery forces uh, deploy the helicopters and uh, arrive at the timing that they do is always uh, very stark to me. Uh, give us uh, your impressions. This is the first time you have been at a landing. Give us your impressions of uh, how uh, this all unfolded uh, from your perspective. Yeah, one thing to watch it on TV completely. Another thing to be here in person. The second we got the visual of the capsule coming down, about 10 minutes down, I just had goosebumps, and those goosebumps have not gone away. It was so incredibly exciting. We were one of the helicopters on the ground, um, and then some helicopters followed us. I was actually able to dial in before the last helicopter had touched down. And Rob, we're going to start extracting our crew now. Keep, uh, keep providing us uh, with your uh, with your visuals, Courtney, we do not have TV at the moment. Uh, we're expecting it shortly, but uh, keep us surprised as to what you're seeing, who is getting out first, and what they're doing with the crew. Yeah, Rob, there's about four personnel on top of this stand right now that goes around the capsule. That stand has a ladder for the personnel to get up on, and it also has a slide in which they slide those crew members down one by one. At that point, uh, the medical personnel is able to carry them over to those chairs we were just talking about, where they'll get their medical evaluation, be able to make those first calls from Earth, and be able to recuperate a little bit before heading over to the medical tent. Um, it looks like some pictures are being taken right now before they extract the crew, but otherwise, it looks like we're just moments away from Commander Sergei Rizhikov coming out. What is uh, the timeline uh, and the sequence of activities after uh, the crew makes its way into the medical tent for their initial uh, evaluations? Yeah, so after um, their the crew will be carried over to the medical tent, which is a short distance away from where we are now. Um, those personnel will conduct a more in-depth medical evaluation. Um, the crew will also undergo a series of field tests Kate Rubens, in particular, will undergo a test conducted by our human research program called Standard Measures, and that's just a set of measures taken um, after landing uh, to characterize the effects of living and working in the microgravity environment. Once those tests are complete, the crew and personnel will head back to their designated helicopters. From there, they'll head to the airport in Caragonda, where Rubens will board the NASA plane back to Houston, and the cosmonauts will board their aircraft to return to their training base in Star City, Russia. Courtney, hang in there with us. Uh, we're going to be coming uh, back to you here momentarily. Uh, just to recap, uh, this is Courtney Beasley uh, at the landing site, NASA Public Affairs Officer. She uh, rode on one of the first helicopters uh, from Jez Kazgan uh, earlier to the landing site where the Soyuz MS-17 touched down about uh, 15 minutes ago at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 10.55 a.m. Kazakhstan Time at the landing site. It was a uh, perfectly normal re-entry for Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov. All of the uh, entry sequence of events uh, were uh, by the book. Everything went uh, 
normally the uh, separation of the modules, the deployment of the parachutes, and a touchdown occurring uh, actually about a minute earlier than had been predicted, almost a uh, bullseye touchdown with uh, the Soyuz sticking the landing, landing upright, which of course helps to, to facilitate the extraction of the crew. Courtney, what's, uh, what's going on there right now? Yeah, Rob, it looks like those um, initial pictures have been taken, and it looks like they are moving down to extract their first crew member. There's about four personnel again on top of the stand around the Soyuz, and here we have it. Sergei Rizhikov is now coming out. And some shaking hands, some high fives, and a lot of smiles on the top of that stand right now. He's turning around and giving the crowd a wave. So excited to be back home. And he's going down the slide right now. Again, the medical personnel um, right on the slide to carry him over to the chairs just a couple feet away. And they're starting the extraction for the second crew member as we speak. Cool. And Rob, in the medical chairs, they'll be seated in the same configuration that they rode home in their Soyuz on. Courtney, uh, we're standing by for uh, the resumption of video from the landing site. And uh, based on your report, Rizhikov is out, and uh, we'll be waiting uh, for you to report on the next uh, crew member to be extracted. Yeah, Rob, we're just um, standing by waiting. It should just be a couple moments from now. Again, the medical personnel on top, ready to help extract and welcome these crew members home. Courtney, sometimes uh, at these uh, landing sites, uh, the locals uh, who know as much about uh, landing operations as almost the rest of us uh, will show up uh, to greet the crew members. Any sign of any locals? No, Rob. Um, don't see any sign of any locals. That may just be due to the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, and without video, you can't tell, but most people okay. here do have on masks to follow those COVID-19 guidelines. And we now have video uh, from the landing site. We just uh, caught a glimpse of Sergei Rizhikov and we're looking at uh, the uh, crew members uh, being extracted uh, and other uh, technical personnel clamoring uh, at the very top hatch uh, that you described a moment ago. Rizhikov uh, is smiling, being, being attended to by the usual uh, compliment of uh, Russian Search and recovery personnel. Blood pressure, 94. Heart rate. Rizhikov uh, having completed uh, his second flight into space, 358 days on his two missions. 176-111. Rizhikov served as the Expedition 64 commander before handing off command of the International Space Station on Thursday to Shannon Walker the NASA astronaut who will herself be handing over command uh, to Aki Hoshide on April 27th after Hoshide arrives on board on the SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle, which is scheduled for launch next Thursday. And if you're looking at Sergei Rizhikov from the front, our NASA personnel are to the left of him ready to welcome Kate Rubens back home.
You're watching uh, look at the top ledge. live television from the landing site in Kazakhstan to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. Sergey Ryzhikov out of the Soyuz MS-17, awaiting uh, the extraction of the other two crew members. The crew commander uh, parameters. Please do not... On the right, carrying a bouquet of flowers is uh, cosmonaut Yuri Malenchenko from the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. Presumably, uh, that bouquet of flowers uh, to be handed to Kate Rubens after she's out of the Soyuz. One. 35 by 85. And Rob, it looks like one of the personnel just went into the Soyuz to help the extraction process right now. And here's our second crew member. Okay. Rob, Kate Rubens is outside of the capsule right now, giving high fives and all smiles. And saying at Kate. Here, right here. Welcome home. And here she comes. And even 300 days in space on her two missions, Kate Rubens is home. A lot of laughs and smiles right now as Kate is coming down. Let's slide down. Okay, here. Hold her and let's go. And she's being brought over to her chair right now. Okay. okay, Rob. Hard Kate Rubin has fire, been seated in her chair. Sit down. Again, all smiles Great. from both Rubens and our NASA personnel. Oh and Kate Rubin's now receiving flowers. A beautiful bouquet. Yuri, thank you. Thank you. Yuri Malenchenko handing uh, Rubens that bouquet of flowers. Uh, on the left of your screen is uh, Rubin's flight surgeon, Dr. Natasha Cho. On the right is uh, a Russian nurse, Roxana Batsmanova, who uh, operates every uh, landing operation as one of the complement of NASA nurses. And Rob, we just asked Kate how her ride down was, and she said, quote, it was awesome. Please step back. So Rubens and Rizhikov now out of the Soyuz, just waiting for the spirit scoff. Sergey, please move over there. And Kate Rubens just realized Drew Morgan was here, so that was also a good reunion. On a placid Saturday morning on the steppe of Kazakhstan, uh, Sergei Kudsverchkov about to be extracted. Pressure? No, oxygen. Oxygen 95.
And Sister Scott is now out. The measurements have been taken, and I will give it to you right away. Rob, again, these chairs are where the crew will sit for a short time for their first set of medical evaluations, and they'll also be able to make their first phone call from back here on Earth. This is also a period of time for their equilibrium to get readjusted to gravity okay. after living and working in space. Okay, you ready? And Kuspirskov is now being carried over to his chair. So all three crew members now extracted and seated. Flight surgeon is taking measurements. Television uh, continues to come in from the landing site uh, where just uh, 30 minutes ago, the uh, Soyuz MS-17 crew, the Expedition 64 trio of Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov landed upright in their Soyuz vehicle to complete their 185-day mission. You just caught a glimpse a moment ago of the nearby uh, inflatable medical tent, the orange tent, that uh, they will be carried into a few moments from now to begin medical tests before uh, boarding uh, individual helicopters for about a two-hour, 15-minute flight back to the staging city of Karaganda. Okay. Courtney, I think we have you uh, reestablished now. Uh, tell us uh, what the scene is out uh, is looking like uh, at the landing site. Dr. Rob, uh, well, as you know, all three crew members now in their seats. Kate Rubin's having conversation with the NASA personnel on the side. Again, she said that her ride home was awesome, and she just said that it's really moving on the side of things. So, I'm excited to be home. I know she had a great time living and working aboard the International Space Station. Again, they'll stay in these chairs for their first set of medical evaluations before being carried over to the tent. And Kate Rubens is now on the phone making her first call from back here on Earth.
Could Sverchkov, uh, having completed uh, the first mission in his career of 185 days, that included a spacewalk last November with uh, Sergei Ryzhikov outside of the Poisk module that served as an airlock for the first time for a Russian spacewalk. Uh, that Poisk module was the departure point earlier this evening for the Soyuz MS-17. Not everybody's here yet. And Courtney, uh, even uh, in the remote uh, steppe of Kazakhstan, there's always time for a photo opportunity. Okay. One more picture of the crew commander. We should be seeing uh, the crew hoisted uh, in those chairs uh, to be brought into the medical tent uh, momentarily. For those uh, just joining us, the Soyuz MS-17 landed at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 12.55 a.m. Eastern Time, about 34 minutes ago. Russian Mi-8 helicopters carrying uh, members of the Search and Recovery Forces uh, quickly landed in sequential fashion, uh, one by one, on a perfectly clear morning on a Saturday morning on the steppe of Kazakhstan to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan to begin the extraction of the crew one by one. Ryzhikov was first out, followed by Kate Rubens and then uh, Sergei Kud Sverchkov. And you can see uh, the crew members now uh, being raised in uh, the chairs to be brought uh, to the nearby medical tent. Courtney, uh, we see uh, Ryzhikov signing uh, his spacecraft. Give us a, a quick glimpse as to what's going on. Yes, okay. Yeah, Rob, the group just took a big group photo with all of the personnel from Roscosmos and from NASA. Again, from here, the crew will be carried into the medical tent for further medical evaluation. Um, after those evaluations are finished, the crew and personnel will head back to their designated helicopters and they'll head to the airport in Karaganda where Rubens will board the NASA plane back to Houston and the two cosmonauts will board their aircraft to return to their training base in Star City, Russia.